Hello again, friends. Time for another In Other News, live from St. Petersburg, Russia. And what's the In Other News you don't know about yet? The big G20 conference is going down. I believe it's September 5th and 6th, right here in St. Petersburg, Russia. The heads of state of the great 20, the G20 nations will all be coming right here to the exact spot that we're actually on. We accidentally snuck onto the dock where all of the heads of state are actually gonna disembark. They're, they're laying down red carpet right now. We're probably gonna get arrested. So let's hurry up and do this plaid cast in short order. What's this G20 thing all about and why is this one of particular significance and maybe a little bit more serious? than most. In fact, I'll entitle this one G20 getting serious. And that is because they're usually getting together to talk about economic stuff. Uh, that's what the G20 does. Put that aside for just a second. This particular G20 meeting, they're probably going to be talking about all things Syria because that's what's on everybody's mind on the global page right now. Let's go back to the front burner. What's this G20 stuff? Do you know what the G20 is yet? Probably not. If so, that means you already took my class and I love you. So let's talk about G20 for just a second. What the hell is the G20? It is kind of the, kind of, sort of, the biggest top 20 economies on planet Earth. And I say kind of, sort of, because there are countries like Iran that uh, a lot of countries don't like. So even though they're a top 20 economy, they're not included. But it is the G20 eight countries plus 12 other big economies that are around the planet. Okay, better back it up again. What's the G8? The G8 is the G7 plus one. Wait a minute, now you give me another G. What's the G7? The G7 is the group of seven, the great seven nations that started to get together right after World War II, the biggest capitalist economies, capitalist democracies on the planet that formed this kind of talking club at Bretton Woods right after World War II to get together informally every now and again, once or twice a year, to talk shop about how they could work together and do this or that to help their economies and work together and make the world a better place, but mostly make themselves even richer. The G7 countries, and help me out KP if I stray here, uh, back in the day were, let's see, the United States, Canada, our neighbor to the north, uh, Great Britain, France, Italy, uh, Germany, and who am I forgetting? Japan. Those are the big seven economies back in the Hizzle day. And then after the collapse of the USSR, they started inviting uh, Russia to become the G8. G7 plus Russia is G8. And again, this was a talking shop where the heads of state sometimes, most often uh, than not, the finance ministers from these countries would get together to talk monetary policy, financial policy, economic policy. Hey, what are you guys going to do this year? Oh, we should do this together. Oh, we should do this trade deal together. Oh, we should adjust our uh, 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 monetary units in such a way. That's what this talking shop was. And I do want you to know this. It's just a talking shop. It's always been a talking shop. It still is a talking shop. What do I mean by that? They have no constitution. There is no legal rules and regulations of what the G7 or G8 ever did. So they would talk about things, but they never signed any contracts, they never inked any deals. There was no legal obligation for any of them to do the stuff that they discussed. Does that make sense? Now why am I talking about G7 and G8? Because we're here to talk about the G20. Well, as you might imagine, all those countries I just listed are pretty white and they're mostly European. Uh, does that reflect the biggest economies and the most important societies on planet Earth in today's world? Uh, not. Uh, who's missing out of the most important eight countries in today's world? Well, let's see. China, the second biggest economy on planet Earth. They're not invited. Not to the G7 or G8. Uh, where's Australia? Where's South Africa? Where's Brazil, a top 10 economy? So in the last few years, I guess it's been less than a decade. I think it has been less than a decade. They came up with this G20. They said, hey, you know what? The G7 and G8 still get together, and they still do. But increasingly, what the hell are they going to talk about that would be of any meaning whatsoever without China and Brazil and South Africa and many other big entities? So they've expanded this talking group to 20. And I'm not going to list them all off the top of my head, but it does include a much more diverse grouping of countries, including Brazil, Argentina, Mexico. They're a top 20 economy. Australia, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, so South Africa. So you now have a bigger representation. Indonesia's in there too, I believe. You have a much better representation of all of the 
real big entities from around the planet that can now get together and say, okay, if we're going to talk about a global policy, these 20 players, if we can get all of these 20 players on board, oh, I'm sorry, China's in there too. If we can get these 20 players on board, then we might actually have a working policy that we could then actually implement on the planet, maybe even take to the United Nations and present it to the other 150 countries of the planet. That's what the G20 is all about. Again, it's mostly focused on economics and finance and things like that. It's the top 20 big boys, minus the people they don't like, like Iran. Uh, and that's what they mostly do in an unofficial capacity with no legal bounds, no contracts, no charter, no constitution, nothing like that. A talking shop for the 20 big boys on planet Earth. Whew. Am I done? No, let's talk about this one. We're here in St. Petersburg, Russia for this G20. Why is that of great significance here in 2013, September-ish? Because there's a lot going on in the world right now. And Russia is hosting this G20 conference. And Russia has a big say in what's going to be said at this conference. And Russia is, is the object of a lot of scrutiny on the planet right now, mostly for this seriousness situation in Syria. That's right. It's a talking shop, mostly for finance and economy. Make no bones about it. The Syria issue will be front and center probably this whole meeting. Because, of course, in the news every single day is that the United States is going to do something. Is the United States going to act? Oh, it's been determined that Syria may have used chemical weapons. So is the United States now going to attack? Are they going to do something? Oh, that's right. And Russia is important in this game because Russia has been blocking any sanctions or movements against Syria at the UN Permanent Security Council. Remember, Russia is a P5 member with veto welding power. And that's why nothing has happened in the Syrian situation at the UN level. So what you're going to see for sure right here on this dock, maybe, Vladimir Putin's going to be right here where I'm standing. President Obama's going to be right there. And for sure, oh, there goes a speedboat. That's excellent. For sure, the president of Russia and the president of the United States will have a sideline fireside chat at this meeting that's going down this week in St. Petersburg, Russia. That's why it's a very, very, very big deal. The other reason it's a very big deal. I could speculate about what they're going to talk about, but what's the point? The United States wants to act now in Syria. Russia is an ally of Syria, does not want the United States to act, will not support any action that the United States is going to do. Russia is really much in a role in, in this point in history of kind of checking, being a little uh, a little uh, a little counter check, little block to U.S. actions, and so they're not going to change their mind on the Syria situation. But why else is this of critical historic importance that the G20 meeting is here in Russia? because U.S.-Russian relations completely suck right now. Suck! And this gives Russia the home field advantage. Uh, and it also plays into that Russia is getting ready to host the Winter Olympics. Is that this year too? Or is that now? It's coming up! So it's a really, really big deal that Russian national pride has been restored here in the last decade, that Putin is a very strong, charismatic leader that is not afraid to stand up to the world, not on Syria, not on other things. Uh, and of course, in the uh, news as well has been issues about, say, gay rights in Russia or human rights in Russia, which the United States protest about, which is another reason there's friction between the countries. And also that the UN and NATO, I'm sorry, that the US and NATO may be building a missile defense shield somewhere in Eastern Europe. And that aggravates Russia. They see the United States and the U US allies as encroaching on their sphere of influence. And Russia, for many years now, has been very tired of that, very, very aggravated by it. And so they're pushing back. And now we have the big G20 meeting here in Russia, the host of the next Olympics as well, Winter Olympics, feeling uh, their oats. Uh, Vladimir Putin, a very strong leader who has made no bones about it. He does not approve of anything that's going to happen in Syria. So you're going to see an epic clash of world opinion happen maybe on this dock. Actually, the real meeting is uh, at one of the palaces, one of the old czarist palaces just outside of town. But they're apparently all going to be greeted here. So what we have is a great a uh, historic situation in which two leaders of two very powerful countries that are at odds with each other right now on many things in the world are coming together for this G20 meeting, which is supposed to be about economics and finance and all other stuff. It's going to be way, way, way deeper than that because of Syria, because of other U.S. 
Russian animosities and because of a whole lot of other things that I'm probably not even privy to because I don't have top secret national security clearance. That's what's going on in the news. We certainly will follow this G20 meeting to see what comes out of it. It could be there might be some breakthrough on the sidelines between Putin and Obama and they come to terms with something. I doubt it. But you never know in the world of world politics and high international finance. But for now, from St. Petersburg, Russia, we are out. And now KP is going to hit us up with a view of St. Petersburg right here on the Neva River.